in the last stream, we finally managed to craft the two ultimate singularities required to craft the infinite storage part and infinite fluid storage part from refined storage. And in today's stream, we're hopefully going to work on crafting the infinite storage part and infinite fluid storage part. Not only are they going to get us one step closer to completing the you've won quest line that is going to complete this pack, but they're also going to give us an infinite amount of both item and fluid storage in our refined storage system so that for the last few streams, we don't have to worry about our refined storage system constantly getting filled up with uh, mostly items, but I guess occasionally fluids as well. Now, before we get started too much with today's stream, this main room here is a little bit of a mess. Do we have an axe? We do. We have a cobalt hand axe. Let's go ahead and get rid of a couple of these guys here. They don't need to be hanging around clogging up the main hall. I'm fairly certain that we're not going to need the quantum compressor again going forward. We only need two ultimate singularities, and I don't think that any of the remaining recipes have any other singularity requirements whatsoever. So we'll get rid of this guy as well. Just drop him back into the refined storage system for now. Get rid of the trash can. Pick up the uh, creative fluid tank. We probably also don't need this damage anvil here. And I'm fairly certain as well that the end stone smelter was only required to make the ultimate ingot, which we have now made. So I think this should now give us a bit more space to, uh, to wander around freely in our main area. But the plan for today is to get these two storage parts. Now, the problem is that these storage parts are very expensive. And in fact, the ultimate singularities are not the main expense in these storage parts. If we look at crafting the infinite item storage part, we are currently missing 1 million nether quartz, 27,000 diamonds, 44,000 slime balls, about 5,000 gold, over half a million redstone, about half a million glass, and then just under 100,000 string. Now, thankfully, some of these can be made using our creative tank setup. For example, the diamonds, the nether quartz, the gold, the slime, and potentially the glass can all be made using the creative fluid tanks. In fact, between streams, I have gone ahead and replaced the two creative tanks on the end here with molten diamond and molten nether quartz. I did this maybe about an hour ago before the stream started, and we currently have 5,000 diamonds and about 2,000 nether quartz so the diamonds are coming along quite nicely uh, we should get to the 30,000 fairly quickly however the nether quartz are coming in nowhere near fast enough we're at 2347 and we need over a million and so i think we are almost certainly going to have to set up an array of casting tables and unlike the rest of these you unfortunately can't pull the molten quartz out into a casting basin in block form, or maybe you can, but then I don't think you can craft the molten quartz block back into uh, into actual quartz. Okay, so I am a bit of a fool here. I have made a slight mistake in that the chat has pointed out that you can in fact use the uh, compacting drawer here to turn blocks of quartz into, uh, into nether quartz. I didn't think uh, this would work, but it is right in front of me and uh, you can see it does work. And so uh, in theory, we should be able then uh, to replace the casting table here with just a, cast, a casting basin, like we've been doing for uh, everything else on this wall. So if we do that, that should produce nether quartz and that should just deposit the nether quartz in here. And so we should, in theory, now be making about nine times as much nether quartz as we were before. But I am also still fairly certain that we're going to have to put down many more casting basins, much like we did with steel a few streams back to ensure that we can get over 1 million quartz in a reasonable amount of time. And not too long later, we now have uh, 16 more of these casting basins down, all of them connected up to the original fluid pipe, which does have a, a pipe upgrade to make it nice and fast, unless you accidentally try and pick it up, which is uh, not what we want to do. Let me quickly go ahead and disconnect that before one of these basins, actually all of these basins fill up with diamond essence. That is not at all <laughs> what we wanted to do, and we might have to take these uh, diamonds out manually, but once I have uh, fixed my uh, little fumble here, we should have a significantly faster quartz producing system that will hopefully get us to the million quartz that we need in a, a fairly short period of time. And so uh, now that we've done that, I think I'm also going to repurpose a few of these other creative tanks here. I don't think we're going to need any more uranium. I don't think we're going to need any more electrum. And I also don't think we're going to need more than 73,000 brass. And so I think we'll use those to get us the infinite slime that we need. Thankfully, you can melt slime, like you can melt all of the ingots in this pack. And so we can get molten slime and then use that 
in casting basins to get blocks of slime, which we can then use to craft down into regular slime again, uh, most likely through the compacting draw. Uh, we can do the same thing for gold. Up until now, all of our gold has been coming in through uh, the compact machine over here. We're breaking the uh, the netherrack, I think it is, or the basalt over in, uh, in here, but that's where our gold's been coming from. Uh, we actually haven't been using our infinite gold system over here to produce gold, but we can start doing that to get the final 5,000 gold we're going to need for the infinite storage part. And then other than that, the last thing that we need to get is glass. And glass is a little tricky because you can't make regular Minecraft glass using the Tinker's Casting Basin. It just doesn't work. That's because if you uh, melt glass, you get molten glass from Tinker's Construct. And then if you pull that molten glass out into a casting basin, you get clear glass, which is a different kind of glass from Tinker's. Now, what we can do here, we can take the clear glass and we can run it through a stone cutter to make it into the chiseled glass. And then if you smelt the chiseled glass or the create glass by the looks of it, you get regular glass. And so it looks like we can, in a roundabout way, make it work. It's not the greatest setup because we do need to do that for half a million glass. And that's quite a bit of manual work. But I don't know if there's a better way. Somebody in the Twitch chat does say you might be able to make, uh, you might be able to use the clear glass for the recipe. And they are totally right. You can indeed use clear glass for the fluid storage parts. And I assume also for the other storage parts as well. That is going to make life a lot easier. We might have to change some of the patterns. If any of these patterns are on exact mode and they have, um, like they specifically need glass, then that could be a problem for us. But if they aren't, then they should use any glass available to them, at which point clear glass should work. So that is perfect. Ignore everything that I just said. And so uh, basically now we'll just get a, a molten slime tank, a molten glass tank, and a molten gold tank, and we'll start gaining those resources as well. And there we go. We now have three more uh, systems in place here. We have one for slime, one for gold, and then one for glass. I have, again, done the exact same thing with glass that we did with nether quartz because we do need 500,000 glass. And now hopefully... Slowly but surely, we're going to start to get some more clear glass. It's going to take a little while, but we should get there, hopefully, sooner rather than later. While that's working, the next part of this craft that we're going to have a problem with is string. We need 88,470 string, as well as a little bit more string as well for the infinite fluid storage part. The infinite fluid storage part, by the way, is significantly easier to craft here. We're not missing much to make this. We're just missing some slime and some string. So really... I'm just going to be focusing on the item storage part because if we can get all the items for the item storage part, we're almost certainly going to also have the items for the fluid storage part as well. It's just much easier to make. So for the string, I would like to get a dedicated spider spawner set up. Now, in order to make a dedicated spider spawner, like we've been doing with our other spawners in previous episodes, um, we're going to have to get a spider spawn egg. And in order to do that, we need to get uh, these guys right here, the spider charm fragments, which require these spider drops from Relinquary. So I think what we're probably going to do, and by the way, we don't have any of those spider drops. Oh, we've got one of the 12 that we need. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to once again grab the cursed earth that we have in the system. We've got 19. We could look at making more. It's not too hard. We need dirt and a wither rose. We do have uh, four more wither roses in the system, so we could make in theory, 32 more Cursed Earth. But I think that we should go ahead and temporarily, once again, remove the Witch Spawner and replace some of the ground underneath these Vector Plates here with Cursed Earth. And just like we did in the last stream, also, I think my... Oh, no, I was going to say, I think my Spawner went and fell out over there, but I actually think it got, it got collected by the Ender Chest, so it should be in the system. But uh, what we'll do is we will, once again, temporarily block off this front entrance here because we don't want any of the the non-witch mobs making their way over there and we'll also once again redirect some of the vector plates here towards the mob measure we'll then replace some of the blocks underneath the vector plates with cursed earth the cursed earth is going to rapidly spawn a whole host of different mobs some of those mobs will be spiders we do of course have the uh, 10 looting upgrades in here as well as sharpness and smite so we'll kill mobs very fast get a bunch of loot and hopefully it shouldn't take us too long to get the uh, the spider drops. Once we have 12 spider drops, we can get a spider egg, use that spider egg on a spider spawner, replace the cursed earth with that spider spawner, spawn just spiders, and then hopefully that combined with the looting upgrade should get us a lot of string very quickly. All right, so this is now working. Uh, I set up a five by five area 
of Cursed Earth right in the middle of the room. It's just under those vector plates. Thankfully, the vector plates don't uh, break if you break the block beneath them. And so um, you can just break the like wood or whatever it is you've got beneath your vector plates, replace it with Cursed Earth, and the mobs will start spawning. As you can see, they all get uh, very quickly moved over into that corner unless they're big tortoises, and then they very quickly get killed as well. And as of right now, we have got five of the 12 required spider drops here. And so it really, chat, shouldn't take too, too long for us to get the remaining seven and craft ourselves an egg. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna head back through this way. And uh, chat has made a good point in that if we're gonna switch this up to be a dedicated spider spawner, we might as well quickly teach our system how to make the uh, Bane of the Arthropods upgrades. This one right here for the uh, the mob masher. We'll encode, we'll drop that in over here. And then if we just go and request 10 of those, start and start, we can drop those into the mob masher and that's gonna kill those spiders just that much faster. And there we go, we have 12 spider drops. And so now, in theory, we can craft up two of these spider charm fragments, use those to craft up the one spider spawn egg. And then from there, I think what we'll do is we'll grab the wither spawner the Wither Skeleton Spawner, that is, from last stream, because we no longer need that. We found out in the last stream that we do also have another Wither Skeleton Spawner over in the Witch Room there. And so uh, I am going to get rid, and by get rid, I just mean pick up uh, the uh, Cursed Earth that I put down just a second ago, uh, just because we don't want all of the other mobs that we have here spawning uh, along with our spiders. And because we do have the uh, Silk Touch here, we can just go ahead and pick all of that up uh, just as soon as we uh, fix our pickaxe. So now that the Cursed Earth is gone, I've replaced that with uh, Dark Oak again. We can throw this down. For now, it is going to spawn with the skeletons, but if we right-click the spider egg on there, that should begin spawning a large number of spiders, which hopefully are going to die fairly quickly and should, over the course of the next few hours, gather us quite a large amount of string. And I really don't think that string is going to be a problem for us. <laughs> the problem here is that um, some of these vector plates, this line of vector plates at the end points towards the mob masher. However... The spiders are very wide creatures, and so I think the fact that these vector plates here are not pointing at the mob masher is causing them to kind of get stuck over there. Now, I don't know. I actually don't think that you can rotate these once they're down, and it's going to be tricky for me to... Um, I'm going to pick up the spawner real quick. And by pick up the spawner, I mean I'm going to break the spawner. It's going to get collected by the system, and then I'm going to kind of wait for these guys to die because I could try and replace them whilst they're all here, but I have a feeling that as soon as I break these two, it's going to be a pain trying to get them back down whilst there are still spiders in this room. The Twitch chat does also make a good point here uh, in that we should change these vector plates as well. Uh, previously, this side was facing that way. Uh, so the idea before was that all of the witches get pushed to the middle and then go forward into that room. But with the spiders, because these vector plates are so fast, what ended up happening is the spiders would just ping pong back and forth because they would be here. They'd go very quickly over to here and then these ones would push them very quickly back over here and they just zigzag over and over again, which is not at all what we want. And so now that we've done something like this, and now that we have all of our vector plates more uh, consistently pointing towards that mob masher in the corner, let's go ahead and grab that uh, spider spawner again. And let's see if this is maybe a little bit better. We do want to make sure we put a vector plate on top of the spawner, otherwise spiders will end up just sitting there. Also, it's looking like it might not be a terrible idea to kind of fill in the cracks around the uh, around the wall here. We do have some more tinted glass. Uh, the reason that these uh, blocks of glass are here is to block out the uh, the glowstone light because the glowstone light was causing problems for us with uh, with the cursed earth when we first put the cursed earth in here a few streams back. But uh, for now, we can just do something like this and that should stop the spiders getting caught in there and that should hopefully get us some string a little bit faster i think this is fine we do already have over a thousand string and, uh, and so i don't think it's going to take us that long at all to get eighty thousand. there are of course going to be some spiders like these guys who kind of just get stuck but i'm hoping that over time they'll make their way down and enough spiders will get killed that we'll have enough string to make the infinite storage part and because we did upgrade that spawner with a nether star in the last stream it should now work even when we're not right next to it so we should now hopefully slowly but surely passively generate string so while we wait for all of those resources to come in all of the glass all of the gold all of the string the other elephant in the room is redstone and as we mentioned before redstone doesn't have a molten form and so we can't just make a molten redstone and then use a creative tank to get a bunch of it so instead 
as the Twitch chat mentioned previously, I think the best way for us to get redstone is going to be via the use of the Batania Mana Pool. Specifically, if we can complete this quest right here to get the Everlasting Guilty Pool, that's going to give us an infinite creative pool of mana that we can then use to infinitely duplicate redstone. Because if you drop a piece of redstone into a mana pool with a Conjuration Catalyst beneath it, you will get two redstone back. And so if we have an infinite mana pool, we can drop one redstone onto that mana pool. That will turn into two redstone. If you leave those two redstone on top, they will turn into four, then eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192, etc. Right? You don't need, you don't need to count all the way up to 500,000, but it will just go on and on and on and on and on. So how do we make the everlasting guilty pool? Well, it is a pretty expensive recipe. The main part of this that's going to make it expensive is the mana tablets. We need a lot of mana tablets, and basically, this is just a lot of mana that we have to store in the physical tablet form. And I think that one mana tablet might be like a full mana pool. It might also be half a mana pool. It's one of those two. But basically, we need a lot of mana. We also need to get nine Gaia Spirit ingots. The Gaia Spirit ingots are made by crafting one Terra Steel, which we have made before, with four Gaia Spirits. And you get Gaia Spirits by defeating the Gaia, which is a boss fight from Batania. But we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, because right now we don't have uh, the capability, and I'm going the wrong way, we need to be up here, we don't have the capability of actually getting uh, the Gaia fight going just yet. I believe that we first need to set up an Alphine portal, we need to work our way through a little bit more of the Batania quest line. You'll see that the Gaia Spirit uh, quest is right at the end there. So the next quest in the line here is for the Elven Gateway. It says, you can preview the Elven Gateway structure in the Lexica Batania. It will require about one-eighth of each pool below the pylon to open the portal. So, between streams, I have gone ahead and re-engaged this room. Uh, previously, I took out the network card over in the network uh, transmitter. That turned off the Batania setup. Right now, it's back online, so we are making thermalities again, and those thermalities are using the lava that we're generating downstairs in the creative fluid tank to produce mana for us. And as you can see, we do now have four full mana pools worth of mana, which is perfect because we are going to have to get ourselves a mana diamond, a mana pearl, and a mana steel. One, two, and three. And if we drop all three of those once again onto our terrestrial agglomeration plate, boom, boom, and boom. That's going to get us our Terra Steel. Nice. So the Terra Steel here is used to make the Glimmering Living Wood. So do we have any Living Wood in the system? We have four, which is not a lot, and probably also not enough. So let's quickly go ahead and drop uh, 16 or more Oak around our two pure daisies here. That should be more than enough uh, Living Wood to get this portal up and running. I also do believe that uh, we're going to need the Living Wood in... Oh, no, the Glimmering Living Wood just needs... Uh, Glowstone, eh? That's interesting. It's the pylons here that require the Terra Steel, and uh, we do indeed need it in nugget form. So let's craft those down. Let's see if we can't craft two Natura pylons. These require regular mana pylons, which again require more mana diamonds and mana steel. That is fine. We can make ourselves two more mana diamonds and really as much more mana steel as we like. Let's drop these in over here, one and two, and we'll do the same with the iron. I'm making a little extra because I know for sure that we're going to need more mana steel throughout the course of the series. And then boom and boom. And then from there, we can go boom. And we're just missing two eyes of ender. That's not gonna be a problem. And there we go. We have our Natura pylons. Nice. In the time it took us to do that, our living wood should basically be about done. We do have uh, FTB Ultimine unlocked now, thanks to our Twilight Forest trip. And so getting all of that living wood is significantly faster than it used to be. So let's go ahead and craft up three Glimmering Living Wood. Fantastic. We also need one Elven Gateway Core, which I believe also does require three Terra Steel Nuggets. It totally does. Capel. And I think that's basically everything. It is. And as a reward, we do get one full mana tablet. That's like one 80th of the way towards being able to craft that uh, everlasting Guilty Mana Pool. So if I'm not mistaken, we do need to place this down. And I think... What I'm going to do here, I'm going to break a little bit of this wall. In fact, I can probably put that back down there. If memory serves me right, 
the structure looks a little something like this. We have the elven gateway core in the center. We then have the living wood around that. So we have living wood here, 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 with glimmering living wood here and here, and then regular living wood here, here. One more glimmering living wood at the top center. Boom and boom. I think that's the uh, the main body of the portal. And then from there, we need two more mana pools. We do have one mana pool. Do we have enough living rock to make one more? We do not. That would have been far too easy. Instead, let's get some stone. And again, let's make another 16 living rock. And once we have a little bit more in the way of living rock, you do have to be careful not to break the uh, the living rock that is part of your terrestrial agglomeration plate setup. Uh, I think there is supposed to be one right there in the middle. There totally is. Let's just quickly drop those back down. Uh, we should then be able to craft up one more mana pool. Uh, we do, of course, need some mana here, which is actually why they gave us the uh, mana tablet. But um, then we can place these mana pools down. Uh, we'll place one down there. We'll place the other one down here. I think those are within the range that is acceptable. We can then put the pylons on top of the mana pools, like so. So we can then drop our mana tablet in, like so. That's going to start to slowly but surely uh, pull mana from the mana tablet into the mana pool. This is also going to give us a good idea of how much mana you can store in a mana tablet. Again, I think it's about half a mana pool's worth of mana. Yeah, it's about half full, and the, the mana pool there is about quarter full. So we'll do the same over here. We'll drop basically the remainder of uh, the mana in that mana tablet into the mana pool. And once that's done, we should then be able to right-click on the Elven Gateway Core here using our Wand of the Forest, and that should open a portal that's going to allow us to exchange certain items for other items, for example, things like Elementium, Pixie Dust, and Dragonstone. So uh, we'll grab this, we'll right-click here. It totally works, you'll know it works when you get these particle effects around the, uh, the pylon. And so now, if we want to make the Gaia pylons, which we do, we need to make four Gaia pylons, that means we're going to need eight Pixie Dust and eight Elementium. So Pixie Dust is made by throwing Mana Pearls into the uh, portal. And then Elementium is made by throwing two Mana Steel. So it's two Mana Steel per one Elementium. So we need 16 Mana Steel and eight Mana Pearls. Unfortunately, you can't go through this portal. It's not an enterable portal like the Nether portal is. Uh, but what we can do is we can take our eight Mana Pearls, throw those in. And in return, we get eight Pixie Dust. Perfect. We can do the same with our 32 Mana Steel here. That should get us 16 uh, Elementium, which is more Elementium than we needed. I actually needed uh, eight Elementium, but that's fine. And then from there, we should be able to get the Gaia Pylons. Let's see if we can make uh, four of those just as soon as we craft four regular Pylons, which does require just a few more Mana Diamonds here. And quite possibly some more Mana Steel as well. Oh, well, that should be fine. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Perfect. Nice. We also need a beacon as well. Shouldn't be too difficult for us. We do have uh, quite a few nether stars remaining from our automated wither killer that we set up in the last stream. And so now I think, chat, that we are about ready to fight our first Gaia. You do need one terrestrial ingot. Again, that's why they've given it to us as part of the quest reward. Uh, in order to fight the Gaia, you have to set up the, uh, the Gaia pylons and the beacon, and then you have to right-click the uh, beacon with a Terra Steel. So I think what I am probably going to do here is we need to set up quite a large area. You do need quite a big area in order to fight the Gaia, but I think I might repurpose the kelp farm that we have here because I really don't think that we're going to need more than 13,000 kelp going forward. And so I think we can probably tear this contraption down and repurpose this room as our Gaia fighting room. Not too long later, we've cleared out all of the kelp and all of the water and the contraption that breaks the kelp. And we've also been through to the Twilight Forest and used our Silk Touch pickaxe to get a bunch of grass here. You don't have to use grass, regular dirt would also work, but uh, we also don't have that much dirt and so it made sense to go and get some grass. I've also crafted up an exchanging gadget. I thought we'd made this before, but I couldn't find one, so maybe we didn't. Uh, if we haven't, uh, the way this works is uh, in the options and controls, if you type in uh, gadget and click on key or category, sorry, you wanna make sure you rebind the settings menu key to something that is usable. Uh, I've got mine set to numpad five. And then if you press that key whilst holding the gadget, it'll bring up this menu here. Now this mode can do a lot of cool stuff. 
For now, we can leave everything as is. We're just going to crank up the range here uh, to the max. And basically, that just changes how big of an area you're going to exchange with the gadget. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get rid of this guy. Drop down a piece of grass. You then shift right click on the block that you want to replace other blocks with. In this case, it's grass. Shift right click. And then now you'll see that it's giving us the option to replace our stone here with grass. And so if we just right click, that is horrible. <laughs> I did not know that's what it was going to do. Um, I thought it was going to just replace, like put the stone in my inventory, but I guess it doesn't have silk touch. So it broke every single piece of stone and put just like a random hodgepodge of ores and cobblestones on the ground, which is not ideal, uh, but also it's not the end of the world. So uh, let's just go ahead and drop a little bit more uh, more grass down here. It does look like we don't quite have enough. That is fine. We can pop through uh, into the Twilight Forest just to get a little bit more. I'm also going to move the elevator here into into the ground. Okay, so that took a little while, but now that we have this large grass room, what we should be able to do is place down the beacon and then place the Gaia pylons. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we do need to throw our Lexica Batania through the portal here to get this upgraded Lexica Batania, which is then going to give us access to the uh, kind of late game Batania stuff, including the Gaia fight, this one right here, Ritual of the Gaia. So if we go ahead and visualize this, I'm going to build it. I'm going to build it here. However, we, that could be a problem, of course, because we do have that elevator there. What I think I might do then, temporarily, is just like move that elevator block kind of just up and out of the way. Like for the time being, it's going to be awkward, but we can always fly up and use it here, I guess. That actually works fine. We don't need that second one. This is okay. It's not going to be a problem. We'll grab uh, some iron blocks. Those iron blocks are going to go down around the base of the beacon. And I think even underneath the beacon if i'm not mistaken like that and then we also need to put the beacon itself down like so and then we'll quickly grab a little bit of cobblestone to allow us to place down the pylons around the beacon as well so one two three and four chat is right that uh, we are out of food so let's quickly go and grab some more sweet berries to dump into our backpack we are going to want to make sure that we're full on food before we even try to attempt to fight the Gaia here. So now we have some more fruit salads. Let's quickly get rid of most of the items in our inventory. I'm hoping we don't die here. And I think that our Terrasteel armor here should be more than powerful enough to allow us to uh, to defeat the Gaia without too much hassle. But uh, there's only one way to find out, and that is to take our Terrasteel ingot and, uh, and right-click it onto this pylon here. Shift right-click, sorry. As hard as you try, the beacon will not accept your sacrifice. You believe the ritual grounds might be improper. So it looks like we need to break the roof and also some of this, like these walls. You can see the red particles here are where the room is not quite big enough. So let's move the roof up by one and then let's move some of the, the middle sections of wall out by one as well. All right, so I've moved the roof up by one and I've dug out a little bit of space on all four sides here. So I think we should be able to begin here my inventory is full of trash let's go ahead and get rid of all that if we shift right click oh we're not quite there we need one little strip it looks like the room is not quite central by the looks of it but um apparently we need to cut out a tiny little strip on three of our four remaining sides and once we've done that we should be able to begin the music So, <laughs> this fight is so loud. But basically, we just have to fight this guy. So you just hit him, and then he moves, and you hit him, and he moves. His health bar is up at the top. Given that we have such good armor... Gosh, it's so loud. But given that we have such good armor, he doesn't really do any damage. Also, we infinitely heal on our uh, food because we have a backpack that's feeding us. After you've hit him a certain number of times, I think one more hit might do it here. He's going to enter phase two. There it is. In phase two, he begins uh, dropping. Uh, dropping random mobs. Which we don't have to kill, I don't think, but we might as well just to not die to them.
I do think this is a timed event, so I think it's just like a certain number of time he spends up there, and then once that uh, time is up, he's going to move down, and then once he moves down, we can start attacking him again. He is quite fast here, but there we go. He's dead. Look at that. We did it. And there we go. We have eight Gaia spirits available to us. Uh, there are other ways you can go about this fight. I believe the quest even has some uh, suggestions over here. There's uh, a few items you can make here. The Fallen Canade and then the uh, Julia. These two here. Um, I think one of these might like push mobs away and then the other one might heal you, I think. Um, but again, neither of those are required if you have super powerful armor and unlimited food. So if we're going to make the um the mana pool here this guy we need nine gaia ingots and each one requires uh, four gaia spirits so right now we have enough to make two but we do need to get you know the remaining seven now i'm pretty sure that what you can do here is you can craft a gaia ingot which is a terra seal ingot surrounded by four gaia spirits and then if you use that to right click on the beacon i believe that triggers like a harder gaia fight which should still be fairly easy for us to defeat and then from that Gaia fight, you get even more Gaia spirits as a reward. So it might be worth giving that a go. Let's go and quickly make one more, maybe two more Terra Steel. If we go ahead and craft up one Terra Steel with four Gaia spirits, obviously we're going to use four here. Um, I think we might get double the number of Gaia spirits back. So I think you might get 16 per fight here. So you do get like four. You, basically, you get uh, you gain four, right? Because it costs us four to trigger the fight. And then instead of getting eight, we get... 16 but we used four to make it so we get like 12 if that makes sense um anyway let's give this a try i think we get different music this time as well but the fight i believe is basically the same also um flight is disabled hey now uh, flight is disabled. We do have, uh, by the way, an um, an enchant on our armor that's dealing damage to him as he attacks us, which is kind of proving to be more of a downgrade than upgrade because it means he teleports away so fast because he's thinking that we're attacking him, which we are, but just like kind of passively. Okay, we did get uh, 16 more Gaia Spirits there. I honestly don't know <laughs> if um, if the harder fight is worth it. I think it is faster than fighting two regular Gaia fights. But you get less, right? You only get, you get 1.5 times as much. I don't know if it's, it might be 1.5 times longer than a regular Gaia fight. I actually don't know. Um, but we need, I think, 36, right? Yeah, we need four times nine. So we need 36 ingots. So we could use four here to get another big guy fight that takes us to 32 which is annoyingly close but uh, i guess we could do like one more giga fight and then maybe just like a regular fight again but uh, we do get a dice which we can roll to get a random reward i don't know if it's going to give us anything too useful ring of thor soulbound we put it in the ring slot i don't know what this does at all uh, but we do still have a uh, a ring slot available all right let's do uh, fight now, well, let's check on our food. We've got 30 fruit salads left. That's more than enough. Uh, let's do fight number three. So we only need four more Gaia spirits here, so we might as well. Ooh, actually. Hmm. So we might have to do a few more of these fights because I'm thinking it might be in our best interest to make some Gaia mana spreaders. These are an upgrade over the regular mana spreaders. So... Uh, the basic mana spreaders can move mana somewhat fast, but not crazy fast. You can upgrade those to elven mana spreaders, which can move them even faster. These are made with Dreamwood and Elementium. Elementium we made earlier. Dreamwood you make by throwing Livingwood through the elven portal. But then the highest tier of mana spreader is the Gaia mana spreader. And so if we're going to make enough mana to fill all of these mana tablets, I think we're going to have to get 
an upgrade. We don't have to get an upgrade to mana spreaders, but it's going to be a lot easier for us to uh, to move all of that mana if we have some higher tier mana spreaders here. And so I might do another high tier fight. This one right here. Uh, that's going to take us up well past the uh, the 36 that we need and should give us a few extra Gaia spirits to make some of these Gaia mana spreaders. And of course, if we need to, we can always fight this Gaia again in the future to get even more uh, Gaia spirits for even more Gaia mana spreaders. But for now, let's see about getting uh, just the uh, Gaia spirits that we need for the uh, Gaia ingots with fight number four. And there we go. We now have 44 Gaia Spirit Ingots. This fight is made, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, but it's made a lot faster by uh, the fact that uh, we have, I think it's Shadow Step 5, maybe? Which uh, means that all of the mobs around us don't really detect that we're here. And so they just kind of stand around doing nothing, which is uh, kind of fantastic. Not that they would deal enough damage to kill us anyway, but uh, either way, let's go ahead and drop these all in. And so um, obviously, if we wanted to make the nine Gaia Spirit Ingots, we would also uh, require nine Terra Steel. So we are going to have to do that in order to get the mana pool we also do need to make quite a few of these runes here thankfully fighting the gaia does give you quite a few runes and a lot of the runes that we need to make also real quick let's get the uh, everlasting guilty pool bookmarked here so we don't have to keep uh, searching the quest book for it but a lot of the runes here are made with other runes and whenever you use a rune in the crafting of another rune you get the base rune back so for this craft it really only needs the two mana diamonds and the mana to make it these two runes you get back as part of the craft. You can use them again to make the second Rune of Lust, and then the same is true for all these other runes. So, in terms of getting all of this mana, we could, of course, try and use our current mana system, that being the Thermalilies up here, but as many people have pointed out in the Twitch chat and in the YouTube comments, there is almost certainly a better way for us to do this, and that involves using this infinite amount of XP that we can generate using a creative fluid tank, because the Rosa... Arcana, this flower right here, is a flower that turns XP into mana. And so if we place down a few rows of Arcanas, use our infinite amount of XP and XP taps to drop XP onto those rows of Arcanas, we can then produce an infinite amount of mana. Um, it's really just a case of how many rows of Arcanas we want to make. And so thankfully, these are not too difficult to make either. It needs uh, pink petals, purple petals, lime petals, and then a rune of mana. The rune of mana is super easy. It's just mana steel and a mana pearl over on the runic altar and so if you take one two three four five of those with one mana pearl we can do one two three four five and six as always you do need a living rock to drop onto that after it's done and we are going to need our wand of the forest as well and once that's done drop on the living rock right click with the wand of the forest and boom we have the rune of mana unfortunately when you're making flowers the rune does get used up so we are going to have to make a rune of mana for every rosa arcana that we make um thankfully though in terms of making everything else uh, i believe we have a flower pouch we totally do we got two of these one of these hopefully has our flowers in it it totally does we need a pink one a purple one and a lime one i believe uh, of the three there, we can then take those, craft them into their petal form. And as we've done before, in order to duplicate those petals, we can plant them. Oh, that's uh, an elevator, I do always forget. Uh, let's do that. Let's do this downstairs. It's a bit, uh, a bit cramped up here. And we'll probably put our Rose Arcanas down here as well, again, just because there's so much more space. But we can plant these. You can then uh, bone meal them. In fact, you can just uh, shift to get these to grow. And then we can shear them. And then craft them, and we've effectively duplicated our petals. And of course, once we have enough petals, one, two, one, two, and one, we can head back up to our petal apothecary, drop in some water, drop in two pink, two purple, one lime, and one rune of mana, as well as a regular old Minecraft seed, and boom, we get a Rosa Arcana. And so now I'm going to do that over and over and over again until we have a fairly decent number of Rosa Arcanas. Chat does make a good point uh, in that we can make these Rosa Arcanas faster if we uh, upgrade this mana spreader right here. So uh, let's go ahead. And by upgrade, I just mean replace. So we can get rid of this and then we can grab some living wood. And uh, by grab some living wood, I, of course, mean uh, we can grow some more living wood. Uh, we are going to want to keep on top of this because we do need to get... Uh, if we're going to put down more Gaia spreaders, which we're hopefully going to do with our Rosa Arcanas, we're going to need a fair bit more living wood. But uh, once we have some living wood, we can turn that into dream wood. We do have some excess elementium from earlier, and uh, we should be able to upgrade 
to an elven spreader and i guess we might as well just go straight up to the uh, the gaia spreader if we're going to use them anyway we can always move it downstairs after we've made all the rose arcanas that we're going to make the dragon stone by the way is made by uh, dropping mana diamonds through the uh, the portal so we'll take one of those throw it in like that um over here we are filling up one of our mana tablets that's so that we can transfer the mana quickly and easily over into here let's just make sure that is set to take mana out of the mana tablet into the mana pool by shift right clicking with the wand of the forest so again once our living wood is done we can just go and throw all of that straight through into here and then that should allow us to craft up the elven mana spreader again the actual petal that you use here doesn't matter uh, we want to make sure that we use one that we have multiple of though we don't want to use our last red one for example so we'll just throw a lime one in there and then from there we can upgrade that to a gaia spreader and so now hopefully this should be significantly faster so now if we do this one two three four five and one oh yeah look at that that is so much faster it's done beautiful boom and boom okay so let's do that like 14 more times uh, you can by the way as it says there right click with an empty hand uh, to do the last recipe so it's going to instantly place the last recipe which does make life a lot easier so if we set this up like this we can do drop click click and then we can hopefully fairly quickly blast our way through a few of these. Chat does make a good point. Uh, if we use the exchanging gadget, so if we shift right click on the wood, we can then just exchange wood for living wood. So we can instantly pick it up and instantly put down a new batch of living wood. Nice. I get to 16. Uh, the reason we needed more of this is uh, to make yet more dream wood. Because now that we have some Rosa Arcanas, we've got 16 of them downstairs. I'm going to steal this mana spreader over here this guy right here the gaia mana spreader and we're gonna make three more of those so what we've done is over here i've placed down 16 rosa arcanas in batches of four and we're gonna basically repeat the exact same setup we had upstairs we're gonna have one tap on top of each rosa arcana and then we'll have pipes we'll have like a central creative tank that uh, we can put down let's say right about there's not really a center here which is unfortunate the center of the room is here but the way i put these down is very awkward i might actually move them just to make them a little bit more centralized but if we put this here and then like we move both of these over by one we can extract uh, unlimited experience from this tank round and into these tanks and then from there of course if the taps are on those are going to start producing mana and we're going to use one Gaia mana spreader per little batch of four. So let's go grab our Wand of the Forest, make sure that this is connected. So you shift right click on the flower, then shift right click on the spreader, making sure that you're in bind mode, not function mode. Uh, if you just shift right click in the air, you can toggle between those two modes. In bind mode, shift right click, shift right click, shift right click, shift right click. And then uh, we will also go ahead and make uh, a new mana pool here. I think we'll have one mana pool for each of these, just because the um, the further you have to shoot the mana, the more mana you lose. So if you try and shoot the mana from here, like all the way over to here, you're going to lose a lot of mana in the process. So the closer the mana spreader is to the mana pool, the more of that mana you're going to get. Um, and you'll see that there's already some mana in there, which I guess is, is nice. But now if we turn these on, we should hopefully... See that shooting through? Of course, we do need to make sure that this over here is set to extract. Like that. Uh, and we also want to make sure that we have um, a pretty decent pipe upgrade on there to keep the uh, the tanks full. This is working, but you'll see that actually our Gaia spreader is the limiting factor here. So another thing we can do to make this even faster is we can add a lens to the spreader to make it better so there are a few different lenses you can add there is a velocity potency resistance efficiency and then a few others bounce gravity bore damaging etc now if i'm not mistaken the two that we are after are velocity and potency velocity i believe increases the speed at which the mana moves or at which the bursts of mana move so if it can go from the spreader to the pool faster you can obviously do more of them in the same period of time so the velocity makes it faster the potency, I believe, increases the amount of mana sent per burst. And so um, normally, you would only put one lens on the uh, on the spreader. However, you can combine lenses and make like dual function lenses that have the benefits of both lenses. So real quick, let's grab some iron here to get some more mana steel because that does seem to be our limiting factor. 
From there, let's make two basic mana lenses, which I do believe do nothing by their by themselves. We can then upgrade one of those to Velocity by crafting it with a Rune of Air, and then we can craft the Potency with the Rune of Fire. I believe then, if you put both of those together with a Slime Ball, you get a Composite Mana Lens Potency Velocity. Nice. Okay, cool. Let me quickly check the Lexica Batania just to make sure I am correct on, uh, on those lenses. I think that is indeed what they do. So if we go back to the uh, Index, Mana Lenses. The velocity lens will dramatically increase the speed at which the mana burst travels, but at the expense of initial capacity and faster mana loss. So basically, that's going to increase the speed it moves, but it's going to start to lose mana faster. Thankfully, our distance is very short, so I don't think we're really going to have to worry about that faster mana loss. Um, also, the um, capacity decrease, we should be able to offset with the potency lens. The potency lens will double the amount of mana a mana burst can carry, however, the beam travels slower. So basically, I think having these together balances it out. And it says after it starts to lose mana, it does so much faster rate. Again, I don't think mana loss is something we have to worry about too much. And so hopefully, if we just right-click this to the front of our mana spreader, this should now be able to move mana faster than it was moving it previously. So we'll turn all these on and we'll take a look. It is still the limiting factor, but I think we should be filling this up much more quickly. But honestly, it might... We might want to do, like, one Gaia Spreader per two Rosa Arcana, because this is going... Like, this is this is our bottleneck, right? We're being bottlenecked by the Spreader. And one more Composite Mana Lens later, uh, we should be able to drop a lens on both of these. And again, this time around, we'll connect two to this guy, and then two to this guy. Some people in the Twitch chat are thinking that we might need even more, like maybe one Gaia Spreader per Rosa Arcana, but we will uh, find out here. Let's turn all four of these taps back on it looks it looks like these are still a little bit bottlenecking but you'll see that the rosa arcane is here they're definitely less full the one of the front here is oh no yeah they're definitely less full so i think we hit diminishing returns here we could in theory put down like one gaia spreader per rosa arcana but given that the Gaia spreaders do require us to fight the Gaia, right? Like, we only have so many Gaia spirits. We need 36 of these in order to actually uh, craft the Gaia ingot. So we can only craft six more of these, and that's actually perfect. If we do two, four, six, that means we don't have to fight any more Gaias, which I think is ideal. So I think for us, this is kind of the sweet spot. And you'll see that we are filling up the, uh, the mana pools here pretty quickly. So um, we worked out earlier that uh, if we're going to get the uh, Everlasting Guilty Pool here, we need 58 mana tablets and each mana tablet is about half a mana pool's worth of mana or exactly half a mana pool worth of mana so we need to get 29 four mana pools and you'll see that this one here filled up pretty quickly and so if we're doing four at a time i don't really think it's going to take that long at all for us to get 29 four mana pools and therefore 58 mana tablets all we need to do now is just set up six more gaia spreaders and four more mana pools and then the the slightly trickier bit is going to be crafting up 58 mana tablets because each mana tablet does require eight living rock. Okay, so while we wait for our supply of living wood to increase, let's look at making some of these runes here. So these are all the same, like we make two of each of these runes. Uh, we need to make the Rune of Lust, Gluttony, Greed, Sloth, Wrath, Envy, and Pride. So we'll start with the Rune of Lust. This requires two mana diamonds, a Rune of Summer, and a Rune of Air. Do we have the rune of summer we do not we do have the rune of air that's fine i believe the rune of summer is another rune that requires other runes it does so it needs air earth sand slime and melon so slime we have melon we have sand we have and then the rune of earth i'm pretty sure we also have we totally do again if you're making runes with runes you do get those runes back so one two three four five and six Living Rock is slowly but surely coming in. That is done. And boom, there's our Rune of Summer. And so it was Rune of Summer, Rune of Air. And then for Lust, it was two Mana Diamonds, I believe. Might as well grab all the Living Rock and also might as well grab two more Mana Diamonds while we're at it because we do need two of these uh, Lust Runes. Again, right click with an empty hand. It'll do the same craft again. Thankfully, that Gaia Spreader is nice and fast. 
And boom, there are our two runes of lust. Next up, we have the rune of gluttony. This one is rune of winter and rune of fire. So again, same idea here. This time we just need winter instead of summer. The rune of winter is a cake, a wall, and two snow blocks. So cake we don't have. Wall we don't have, but we can make with string. And actually, we did, well, we did have one wall, and we only needed one wall. Uh, we also needed two snow blocks, which we don't have. However, I'm fairly certain you can make these, yeah, with the pure daisy. So uh, if we get some buckets of water, we can put those down around the pure daisy, and that will allow us to create snow, which we can then shovel up and then recraft the, uh, the snowballs. So let's do... It's a little tricky. No, it's not tricky. Let's do... It's a little tricky because you, uh, you have to not have the water destroy the daisy. So we have to do something like this, so we can put water here and here. I think we did this earlier in the series. Do we have a spare bucket? We do not. That would also be far too easy. Let's quickly grab some water. While we wait for that water, what do we need next? Uh, next up is Rune of Greed. So Greed is spring and water. So again, the same deal here. Spring is super easy. We need saplings and wheat. Do we have a Rune of Spring? I feel like we've made that before, but uh, that is fine. I don't know if we can use these sickly twilight uh, forest saplings, but we can give it a go. So three saplings. Of course, we don't have any wheat. That would also be uh, far too easy. Thankfully, we do have the uh, the wheat seeds and a hoe and the ability to, uh, to grow the wheat fairly quickly with our uh, shifting capabilities and even more quickly with a little dose of, uh, of bone meal. One and two. This time with the rune of water and fire. So boom, boom. And yeah, it looks like, unfortunately, you have to use regular, like, vanilla Minecraft saplings. It doesn't look like it accepts the, uh, oh no, I've just put too much uh, wheat on. Hold on. That could be my bad. Let me try that again. Take a wheat off, try that. Boom and boom. Totally works. Fantastic. Thank you, Vazge, creator of Batania. Boom. There is our uh, first rune of spring, and we can do the same again here. One, two, three, with one wheat, and then the rune of water, and the rune of fire. Boom, there is our second rune of spring, and then we were trying to make the rune of greed, which required the rune of water, the rune of spring, and two mana diamonds. Okay, we're going to need many, many more mana diamonds going forward here, so let's just quickly go ahead and do something like this. Fantastic. Uh, then let's do two mana diamonds with the spring and the water. I didn't need to make two mana uh, spring runes, Isaac, you fool. That's fine, because of course we get the spring rune back here. This thing only costs mana diamonds. Fantastic. There are our runes of greed. I will put these runes back in the system. Uh, over here, our snow is done, so let's grab our diamond shovel and quickly do something like this and like this. That's going to get us the blocks of snow required. Uh, so now what we need is a cake, which might be easier said than done done. I feel like I remember making a cake. Yeah, never mind, actually. I am a fool. We have some runes of gluttony in the system. I should really check those before I start making things. So, rune of lust is done. Rune of gluttony is done. Rune of greed we've just done. Uh, next up is rune of sloth. Let me check that we don't have rune of sloth lying around. We don't. We do have rune of autumn, however, which is, I think, the only one left that we haven't yet used, so I'm fairly certain. Yep. Rune of autumn with rune of air, and you guessed it, two mana diamonds. So, boom, boom, and boom, boom. And there we go, there are the Sloth runes taken care of. Next up is Rune of Wrath, Envy, and Pride. Let's have a look. So, Rune... Do we have Wrath? We have Wrath. It looks like we don't have Envy or Pride. And specifically, we have more than two Wrath, and we also have more than two uh, uh, Pride. Oh, no, we do have Pride. Okay, we just need Envy. So, Envy is the Rune of Winter, Rune of Water. That seems very easy. We have the Rune of Winter, if I'm not mistaken. We just made it. We do have seven of them. So Rune of Winter with Rune of Water and two Mana Diamonds.
And there we go. And I think that's everything. I think we have all of the runes required there uh, in order to make the Guilty Pool. We also have the Gaia Spirits. And so now it is just a case of getting all of those mana tablets. Okay, so all of these are down. All of them have lenses. Let's go ahead and, uh, and turn these taps on. Uh, and actually, before we turn the taps on, let's go ahead and get more mana tablets, shall we? So we have uh, some Living Rock. Not quite enough to make 58 yet, but that's fine. And then we do have some mana steel as well. Let's do that. Uh, is that another correct recipe? I really thought that was the recipe for mana tablets. I guess it is not. It is, oh, it's a mana diamond. That is also fine. We do have uh, some mana diamonds ready to go. So for now, we'll take one, two, three, and four of these, and then we'll do one. That is set the right way. Let's make sure all of these are set to go the right way. Uh, two, three, and four, like that. And then we'll turn all of these on as well. And we should, slowly but surely, also, I do need to, uh, to connect these, actually. I completely forgot. These need to be actually bound to the mana spreader. Otherwise, that is not going to have any effect whatsoever. But now, we should, slowly but surely, uh, see these mana tablets fill up with mana. And, uh, and as they fill up, we can then make new ones and replace the pre-existing ones with the new ones. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to just start placing these into this giant wall contraption so this is i believe nine by nine by nine it is indeed uh or, well nine by nine it's not nine deep but uh, this is the nine by nine and so we're gonna have to start putting this into the wall uh we should probably put the runes that we already have in here that's gonna make it easier to know where to put um all of the mana tablets so let's take the uh, runes of we'll take two runes of pride two runes of gluttony Two runes of Envy, two runes of Wrath, two runes of Lust, two runes of Sloth, two runes of Greed, and is that all of them? I think seven might be right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is. So the bottom is Pride. So we're going to do that here and here. I know the top is, uh, is Lust. And then the rest are a mystery to me. So we have uh, Gluttony, Greed, Sloth, Wrath, Envy. Gluttony, Greed, Sloth, Wrath, Envy. Okay. And then, yeah, now we need to keep filling this in. And of course, we do need to get uh, nine more Terra Steel as well. So we need nine mana steel ingots, as well as nine mana diamonds, and of course nine mana pearls. We don't have nine mana pearls, so we're going to have to go ahead and make some more mana pearls with the old mana spreaders. Um, we also are definitely not going to have enough mana here, because it's half a mana pearl worth of mana per terra steel. So we can make, I guess, eight if all of these were full, which they're not. Uh, but the good news is we can always take one of those mana tablets from downstairs and bring it up. Uh, and put, like, deposit mana into these mana pools manually to allow us to get this Terra Steel mid. And there we go. There is our ninth Terra Steel. So with the nine Terra Steel, we can craft up the uh, Gaia ingots that we need here. And then we can fill those in on the board downstairs. So now we have everything on the board that's not mana tablets. So uh, right in the middle. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now we just need to fill in the rest. We've got what, four? Yeah, so we need to get 54 more full mana tablets into that crafter. So Chat has had a pretty good idea here, and that is to use these advanced item collectors to collect the mana tablets once they're full. So in here, if you set this to uh, whitelist and make sure that it's set to match NBT, which it is by default, we can then put in a full mana tablet and uh, if match NBT is, is on, which it is, it will only pick up four mana tablets. So right now, and I've done this, uh, I've done this over here as well, because the range of one item collector isn't quite big enough to, uh, to get all of the four mana pools, but two of these is. So uh, if we drop down a four mana tablet, it gets picked up. If we drop down a empty mana tablet, it doesn't get picked up, which is perfect. So all we have to do now is uh, periodically come down and make sure that we have enough mana tablets empty mana tablets, that is, to, to refill the pool. So we need uh, three more here. Hopefully we've got enough living rock for it. We totally do. So we can go uh, one, two, 
three, and four. And now instead of me having to judge when they're done, as soon as they're done, they'll get deposited into here and I can take them up and add them to the wall. Okay, so I've placed down eight more pure daisies down here. We are gonna have to change these manually, but we do have the exchanging gadget. And so whenever we need to swap out living rock for stone, we can do it in large batches like this, which is a lot easier. It doesn't, it means we don't have to manually place down all the stone. And then once we have the living rock, we can then use that to make even more mana tablets. Um, over here, our latest round is complete. We've got quite a few more of those ready to go. And so now we'll just do this over and over again. Uh, we're, I think, almost halfway there. Okay, so quite a lot of mana tablet filling, well, crafting and filling later. We only need two more mana tablets. These last two here should be all that we need in order to craft the everlasting guilty pool. We have all the Gaia spirits. We have all the runes. We have all of the other... 52 mana pools full of mana in the wall already. This wall is already full. All we have to do is place down one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now, once again, we take a button. We do need to make sure that we have coal in our uh, flywheel. There we go. All right, chat. I think it's doing it. Is it doing it? It's not doing it. Okay, hold on. Press the button. And also, yeah, I'm a fool as well. We need a cog. Make sure you have a cog down. We are overstressed. That is to be expected. We did turn this up while fighting the withers. Let's bring this right back down. 48 is fine. Is 64 okay? 64 is also fine. All right, let us try and escape. It's doing it. It is doing it so fast. Chat. If all is well, if all of these mana pools are completely filled, it totally worked. Look at that. We have the everlasting guilty mana pool. We've done it. They were all correct. I was a little worried that one or two of those mana pools weren't going to be completely full. Um, obviously, once we started using the, the filter on the advanced item collector, they were going to be full, but I was worried the first few might not be. So, in theory, if we can make this catalyst, which we should be able to do, we need three elementium. Uh, which we do not have, but we do have uh, six mana steel. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then for the pixie dust, we just need a mana pearl, which we do not have, but again, that's fine. We can make one mana pearl very easily over here. What we should be able to do is drop all these in, get our three elementium, drop this guy in, get our one pixie dust, craft up the conjuring catalyst. It does require the alchemy catalyst. However, we do have the alchemy catalyst over here. So if we steal this, we can head downstairs. If we place the Guilty Pool above the Alchemy Catalyst, uh, not above the Alchemy Catalyst, I'm sorry, above the Conjuring Catalyst, this one right here, what we should be able to do then is take, let's say some redstone, drop that redstone down, and in return we get two redstone. And so in theory, I think, that we should have an infinite redstone generation system now i think if i were to leave this going in def i think honestly like right now the redstone's kind of spraying outwards a little bit but uh, i think if i were to make this horribly bad if i was to make my server admin's skin crawl real quick and do something like this what we could probably do is just drop in a stack of redstone and it should just work Now it is doubling and doubling and doubling again. So real quick, we do want to make sure that we have uh, space in our drawer here for all of the redstone we need. Now we might have to make a new redstone drawer because I don't think that, uh, oh gosh, I can feel the lag. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> oh no. Dump it, dump it. I didn't think it was going to get that bad that fast, but I guess if you double, 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 it's going to get bad pretty quickly. Can we clear out the redstone fast enough? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Uh, so we have 47,000 redstone. We don't have that much redstone. <laughs> However, we do now have a way of infinitely duplicating our redstone forever. And there's probably a more elegant solution uh, or a more elegant way of 
utilizing this to actually get more redstone. Again, if we need 500,000 redstone, I think we're going to have to dedicate an actual draw, not a, a single slot in a two by two draw to redstone. Like we're going to have to make one big dedicated draw for redstone to hopefully get that, uh, you know, stored away for us. As for everything else, we do have the 80,000 string. So as far as the infinite storage part is concerned, string is done. All of the rest of the things are coming in, albeit somewhat slowly. Actually, we're not quite there on string. We need 5,000 more, but it will get there. Diamonds are coming in. We've got 18,000. So we're almost halfway there on diamonds. We're about a third of the way there on slime. And we're nowhere near on glass and nether quartz. And so I think what I'm going to have to do between streams, the server is chunk loaded. So between streams, the slime should get there. The diamonds should get there. The gold has already got there. And the string will also get there. Um, we do want to make sure, actually, real quick, I'm going to take some of these upgrades out and put them over here because we have been having some slight problems with the string clogging up our system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a void upgrade in here that way we should hopefully get a decent amount of string and then we'll delete any excess string once we got past um however much this can currently hold which is definitely more than we need but what i think i'm going to have to do between streams is i'm going to have to drastically increase the number of casting basins i'm going to have to set up a new room just dedicated to casting basins for glass and nether quartz because we're nowhere near close on either of those it has been maybe like two hours since we set them up we do have 150,000, we got 100,000 other quads, so we're, what, one-tenth? Actually, we might be fine, chat. We might actually be fine. It's taken two hours to get 100,000, but that means over the next, you know, 24 hours, the next day, we should probably get the remaining 900,000 other quads that we need, so that shouldn't be a problem. The glass, we've only got 20,000, and we need 500,000, so I might have to maybe just double or triple up on the glass, but that shouldn't be too bad. I was thinking I'd have to do a lot more to get that going but that should be fine and like i said the the diamonds and the slime should just get there on their own uh we do also need oh yeah of course we need more quartz storage that quartz just backed up it is indeed just totally backed up gosh dang it okay so we do need to make sure we have enough storage in these drawers to actually hold all of the uh all the quartz that we're going to try and hold i think you can get to a million like in in storage if you fill this thing up with um with tier 5 upgrades which we uh, which we totally can do Like that. Chat does make a good point. We should go and stop those uh, taps downstairs just to make sure that we don't end up with uh, a trillion experience filling up on the floor, given that these are all uh, completely full now, and given that we don't really need any of this anymore now that we have an infinite amount of mana available to us. And so between streams, I'm going to leave all of this uh, stuff chugging away here. When we come back for the next stream, we should basically right away be able to request the uh, infinite storage parts. We should have hopefully gathered all the resources here that we need between streams. Um, I'll see about what we can do for the redstone. Like if there's a neat, elegant way of like setting it and letting it, you know, work, then we might do that next stream. But uh, if there isn't, then I might just between streams spend a bit of time duplicating the redstone until we have, you know, 600,000 enough to make both of the storage parts. And then next time we'll come back for what might be the final episode of Cave Factory, depending on how hard Mine Colonies is. I have not played with Mine Colonies at all. I have no idea what we're doing. But after we have the infinite storage parts, the only thing left to do is to get a tier 5 or level 5 town hall from Mine Colonies. The creative motor is super easy. We can just take our creative capacitor and craft it into a creative motor. So doing that is not going to be too difficult at all. And so, yeah, next time we'll come back. We'll see how Mine Colonies works. We'll craft the infinite storage parts and we will complete, hopefully, the You've Done questline. For now, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.